and welcome to another episode of Ubar. Today, I want to start a new series. And in this series, I want to talk about how to architect and design cloud applications and more specifically, serverless applications. In my channels, I tend to do a lot of tutorials and show you how to do things. I show you different things, new things, but they're very oriented to developers and hands-on and showing you code. I try to apply good practices when I show you things, but I never go through the good practice test themselves. So in this series, I want to go in the architectural good practices to build, design, maintain, and all that cloud serverless applications. This series of videos will be following the well-architected framework. Uh, if you don't know what it is, in this video, we are going to cover that. And also, uh, I'm going to apply the serverless lens to all the series, so you will learn more about them. I have talked in many videos about the well-architected framework and never really covered the the framework itself in detail, and I think it's very, very relevant. Now, the question that you might be wondering is, what is the well-architected framework? Well, it's a framework that AWS designed some time ago, and it comes with all the best practices on designing, developing, operating, reliable, secure, efficient, cost-efficient cloud applications. We learn from all the customers, from all of you, from us and from Amazon.com on how to operate these uh, big scalable applications. And we gather all that and made a document. This document is a PDF, it's free to download. I will leave you the link in the description box. And it contains a list of uh, pillars that we are going to talk about that in a moment with pros and cons on how you can make decisions to architect your applications. It also talks about best practices for doing that and um, help you to do the trade-off because nothing is white or black in this world. Everything has a trade-off. You can make a very reliable application, but it might cost you more or it will be, I don't know, you need to make the trade-offs. And this document helps you to think about those trade-offs. What are your uh, priorities? Designing all these things, it's uh, the idea of the document. So I mentioned that there were five pillars that are like the guiding for this uh, framework. And the following videos after this will be talking about each of the individual pillars. I will be showing the pillars for the serverless applications in particular, because they're so broad that it's very hard because I want to take you down to some concrete examples and guide you from some demos or show you some code because I love coding and I love showing you things. But the first pillar is operational excellence. And this is about running your workloads, operating them, making them uh, maintainable, how you can gain observability, how you can improve constantly your operations. So this is amazing pillar for those that are really interested in the DevOps aspect, in the uh, observability aspect, you will learn a lot when you read this pillar. Then we have the security pillar. And in AWS, security is day zero job. So we are really focusing on making everything secure from our services to your applications. We have the shared responsibility model, and we want to uh, show you how you can secure your applications in the cloud. So the security Pillar talks about best practices for securing your applications, how you can protect your data, how you can protect your system, your assets, and everything in between. Then we have the reliability pillar, and here is how your workloads, your applications, your whatever you are doing, uh, can perform their uh, duty, how they can do it consistently and without having high like you are always expecting your service to be up, how you can achieve that. 
This is important through the whole life cycle of your operations, when you have peaks, when you don't, how you handle that. So that's very important for modern applications. We have spikes, our traffic is very unpredictable. We might have a lot of load that is coming from unknown places and we need to handle it because our users are always expecting that everything is up all the time. Then we have the performance efficiency pillar. And this is about how to run efficient services. You want to make your services as efficient as possible and use the kind of best technology in place in order to run your services. So how you can do that through the life cycle of your application. And finally, we have the cost optimization pillar. And this is how to do your workloads with the best price possible. And depending on why are you running? What is your workload? Who are you working for? Maybe one of these pillars is more important for you than the others. So not all the pillars have the same weight in the different organizations. These are five pillars, but you need to define which are the most important for you. Some organizations might not care about cost and they are more interested in reliability. So they focus on those pillars. One important thing to have in mind about the well-architected framework that is not something that you have to do in one go. So you read the document and then you go and implement everything. No, this is a process, is a activity that never stops. So the well-architected framework will give you the best practices, will ask you questions about what are you doing, and then you can iterate on it and kind of go every six months and evaluate your architecture and find places where you can improve. For example, you want to improve in your cost optimization. So that's the pillar you might be focusing first and then you move to others. And that's how it works. How you can do the well architected? Well, there are many ways you can self assess <laughs> and that's something you can do with the well architected tool that I will show you in a moment. Or you can get a third party to do it for you. I have talked with Rolf Koski on how he does it. He's been doing well architected reviews for a long time. So I'll leave you the link in the description or somebody internally in your company can do the well architected review. But there are two very important things to have in mind when we are doing the well architected. We want to implement practices. We want to have ways of doing things, processes, standards, focusing on enabling your people in doing things. We don't want to have a centralized place that everything needs to go through because that's not efficient. We want to have mechanisms. We want to have automation as much as possible. And this is something I have chat with uh, when I interview Angela Timofte. And also when I interview Nicole Yip from Lego, they talk about how they do serverless first, how they enable people to take advantage of serverless by putting mechanisms and practices in place. So this are uh, ways of doing the well-architected in your organization. So if you want to implement them, I recommend you to check these interviews so you can see how these organizations have achieved. So before we move on and see the well-architected tool, are you enjoying these videos? Do you like more of these type of videos where I just talk? Let me know in the comments, like and subscribe this video as always. So let's talk about the Well Architected tool. The Well Architected tool is inside your AWS account and you can access it and use it with no cost. It's a set of questions, the same that you will find in the Well Architected framework. So there is nothing new there, but it's in a way that is kind of um, like a checklist that is there for you that you can share with others and you can work collaboratively. So let's check uh, what you can find there. So in order to open that, just go and look for the well architected tool, define a workload, and then add a name and description and who is the review owner. And with that, then you can decide if this workload is a production or a pre-production. So that what will happen. Then you need to say in which regions this workload is running. So you will need to define in which regions you're running these things. I'm just putting Ireland because all my things are in there. But sometimes your uh, workloads are spanning through multiple uh, AWS accounts. So you might want to put those numbers in. 
If you have an architectural design where you define everything, you can also put the link there. If you have some industry, you can uh, put that there as well. So this uh, will give the definition of what is your workload. You can have many workloads and they all can have different properties. Then you want to apply the lenses and this will make different questions depending on which lens you apply. And in here, I will just select the serverless lens. Then you can start uh, basically uh, reviewing your workload. You have the two lenses there with 52 questions one and nine questions the other, and how many questions you answer. So you go into one, you um, basically answer some questions and you save it as a milestone, and then you can come back in six months and see how your questions are doing. So here you can see that I have 11 unanswered questions and you can go into them and answer the questions. Uh, there you will see also explanations of all the pillars, like what it means, what it's all the different bits. You can um, mark questions that are not relevant to you, mark uh, parts that are not relevant to you. This is a lot of things that Maybe you think this is a lot of typing, but this is a great way to document your architectures. Sometimes we make a lot of assumptions and we are not really thinking about all these things. So when you go through the tool and you review all these questions and you look at all the information and you go back and forth, you're thinking about things that you might have not thought before. So the idea of this framework is that it's helping you to think, it's helping you to go deeper, it's helping you to put priorities on where things matter, where the value for your organization is, and who is the owner of what. And well, we will talk about that in a moment. But but you can see how, how easy it is to answer the questions when you're done, you save, and then uh, you can do the same for the serverless lens. And basically, when you're ready answering all the questions you want, you just create a new milestone and then you come later and review. You can involve many people in this and uh, you can see the improvement plan, like what is what kind of things you can do to, to improve those things. So this is a very um, iterative tool. You will come here a lot and do a lot of work with it. I want to, before moving into the pillars, I want to end this video with some general design principles that the well architected gives in general for all your cloud applications. The first one is basic for cloud. Stop guessing your capacity needs. You're in the cloud. Capacity is infinite. Just use as much as you need, pay for how much you need, and then have methods and mechanisms to scale up and down as your traffic changes. Then test your systems at production. And that doesn't mean that you need to test in production, but be with all this capacity that is almost infinite, you can replicate the production environment in your staging environment and test there. So don't make different environments with different capacities, with different configurations. Make exactly the same production environment to test all your uh, applications. Automate everything you can. The more you automate, the more you can experiment because when you have automation in place, you can change and tweak and see what can be done better. Allow for evolutionary architectures. I think this is one of the most interesting things from the cloud. In the past, we tend to have a fixed architecture that we are just kind of filling in when we are developing our applications. Now our applications change all the time. New services come in, new solutions we need. Don't over-engineer things. Think that things will change and make applications that are adaptable, that can change within. And in this way, then your applications are designed for change and designed for evolution, and they can adapt when this need. This means using the couple applications. This means using microservices. This means doing a lot of decisions that will help you to build these evolutionary architectures. Another important thing is use data to drive your architectural designs. This is something very Amazonian to use data for things, but try to keep logs, metrics, and I don't know, like we talked with Alex long time ago about tuning your Lambda functions for the best uh, performance uh, using this plugin for tune Lambda functions. So you can find your metrics 
Try to understand how you can improve things. So do that. And then, and then another great tip that this framework has is to do game days. Game days are just putting your production system in like test mode, in experimentation mode, make everything explode in a control environment in a control day, make everybody understand uh, how errors in production can affect them, how you have these mechanisms and processes in place to fix them when things go, like when things hit the fan. <laughs> so these game days will test your architecture in simulated production errors and will help you to keep your people like more hooked and responsive when something goes wrong. So game days are a great way to make your like personnel and systems feel like, oh, we are not comfortable, but it's fun. So these are very generic design guidelines that you want to apply in your applications. Then let's jump into the lens. So there is many different types of lens. I will be focusing on the serverless lens. So I want to give you some general principles for designing serverless applications. Lens are just added questions, other best practices for different industries and different technologies like serverless, machine learning. Uh, I don't know, there is one for SaaS, IoT. So depending what you're doing, there is a different lens. So for serverless, the first guiding principle that I have said like 20 million times is make your functions small, simple, do one thing, one thing only. So that will make it everything simple, easier to maintain. Everything will be more in control. Think about concurrent requests, not total requests, because the problem with serverless application is things that happen at the same time. That's when things tend to go a little crazy. If you're not aware, it's not about how many requests you're handling, but it's how many requests you're handling in a second. Don't share anything between functions like state is not persistent. So use persistent storage or use some state management like step functions or some like persistent storage like S3 or Dynamo or something like that. Don't rely on the temporary storage of the Lambda functions. That's something I have said many times. Orchestrate your applications using state machines. This is super important to keep a track of how the application flow, keep a design of your application in one place, and then have smaller functions and components that are doing things for you. Use event-driven applications and design for event-driven applications. Use event triggers when possible and use transactions with event-driven applications in mind. And design for failure, design for duplicate. Make functions that are independent. That doesn't matter how many times you apply that function, you get the same result. Use a services in an independent way. And that's something that is very important because events might happen once, might happen twice, or might happen three times. You never know because the services might retry and might not realize that the message already went through. So this is quite a long video of me talking, but I think we needed this. I think we needed to have a playlist only on architectural decisions, but believe me, in the next videos, I will have more code because I need code to, to, to feel that I'm doing something. If not, I'm just chatting with you and this is kind of a easy video to make. So in the next video, we are going to talk about operational excellence. We are going to talk about observability, metrics, tracing, and all these fun things. So I see you then. And let me know in the comments if you like this type of videos. Should I do more or should I just shut up and keep on showing you tutorials? I see you in the next episode of Uwak. Ciao, ciao!